This is really the fighter and the kid. Come on, baby. What's up, are. buddy? Listen, we were man. just in here, dude. Yeah, I know. You we spent my, a lot of time here. A lot of time here. We were just here a lot on of fun Saturday too. night. I, I came, and I think you came tired and a little, you know. I, I was, was going to pull the cord, mid. bud. Yeah. Because I, like, I was at the Glen Helen Raceway with my son, some others doing some stuff up there. I left. The, it's like a two-hour drive. I got there at 10. And it's I was there. Rainy, I was there to about rainy. I was there about two thirty. Yeah, got back at f you know a little later, and then I was like, and then I was watching the prelims. They're so good. I'm like, yeah, which one am I gonna miss? Right. I was smart. I was looking. I'm like, who's gonna take the like, kind of which, which one's gonna go to decision? I was like, Aljo is probably gonna wrestle him. Yeah. Won't be that exciting. Uh, although I'm a fan. Yeah. So I left her in the Aljo fight. Saw the rest of the prelims. But yeah, I was gonna yank the plug. Yep. And boy, am I glad we did. We it. had a good time. Oh, it's and fun. I did you get my three grand? I did get it. Okay, because that was hard. But and I didn't I, have to remind I, you this but, time. But now I'm down six thousand dollars. Now, yeah, you're my sugar what, daddy. Now, when you see my Ford Lightning, you see these new carbon fiber parts. I paid for those. I'm gonna put built by Brian Callen. I, I built. I paid for those. You're my sugar daddy. I know that hurt me. You know, most sugar babies get like watches yeah. and like cool yeah. purses. Yeah. Not this sugar baby. Fenders. Yeah. Bumpers. And daddy realized hoods. that I have to make about five and a half thousand dollars, six grand to afford to pay you three grand it's tax season and too, that's Bubba. the problem but when you get see what i did there was i got emotional i let my emotions and my belief in magic no take precedence. no not with justin gaethje max no, no, like that no, that, no, that was different are you talking I, about I lost, alex jamal hill alex jamal yeah. yeah but i love when you go on those rants yep and i just let you go you let me go i love like it. i'm talking about the edge of the pocket maybe he's got that oh, magic eye maybe oh no but his demeanor his some guys down. just have it <laughs> oh my and God. i say things like alex keeps his hands down oh, I love, that's my favorite thing you do yeah oh, low, dude his hands are so low and yeah. and then also his movement he the guy gets hit yeah. and then there's something about jamal hill man he just he has it when he gets <laughs> in there i'm like oh <laughs> yeah and in my head i'm like ching cha ching cha ching yeah, yeah. Cha -ching. yeah that was bad Ah, Listen, not bad. Some be, a lot of people. You had Jamal. the emotion. You had the emotion for I had I had Sarukian and you you had the emotion for I, Alex. But, no, I don't bet on those. Yeah. That, but that's also that's like that, that's a yeah. tough bet. Yeah, it could have gone either way. If that was five rounds, Charles beats him. That's the difference. Probably not. If if Alex and uh, Jamal Hill is five rounds or twenty rounds, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't. He's matter. gonna do that every time. It doesn't matter. If you know Max and Justin, like that's how it goes. Yeah. But with 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 Charles and Armin, like I said, that the the problem with that fight is three rounds is not that's not the move. With that not caliber of fight for a title eliminator fight, it should have been five rounds. Yeah, that that's right. sways in Charles' favor. Now you know they gave Armin a title shot right after, and he turned it down. Really? Why? Mick Maynard went up to um, Armin Sarukin's uh, camp and him right after the fight. What? And we're like, we're gonna give fight. It's June first. To, to fight Makachev. Makachev. That makes sense. That makes sense. Which part? Turn it down or not? Turning it down. <laughs> you don't think so? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Why is that? <laughs> I haven't laughed that wait, wait. hard in a long Why? time. Wait, hold, hold on. on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> hold on. I mean... <laughs> You think I'll tell you it's why like you've never watched the UFC? No, I'm going to tell you why. It it's so sense. fun for me. I feel like he, he oh. doesn't want to do a repeat oh. of a of a boring fight. Oh, thank you for that. Out. You gave me the gift that just keeps Wait, on. Wait, you think you think? <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! You think that Sarukian? Stop it! Should have taken the title fight. Oh, <laughs> oh, this is good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, let me educate you. Yeah. Now, if I'm Armin and I'm his team, how it should work yeah. is they should come to go, hey, when would you like to fight Makhchev? And you say, well, I'd like some time off. I don't want to do it right away. Let's do it in September so I can have some time off through the camp. That's yeah. how it should work. Yeah. But historically, when you turn down a title shot, you don't get one. You're never getting it. And we know this, right? But can he, the, build, hey, he can build hype. In the game? No. We know this. Hold on. He can build hype. Oh, really? What's he going to do? Again, historically. Bring up the lineup on 55. I'll tell you who he could fight that we'd all want to see. There are a lot of guys. Oh, but see, no, but see, you're already headed down that lane. Yeah. You're talking about fighting a lot of guys. Well. So, so here's the thing. Yeah. Will he get a title shot? Yes. Yes. He's going to now, the UFC goes, oh, okay, we're going to make this very difficult now. What about Saru what about Dustin Poirier? Saru what do you mean, Dustin Poirier? Dustin Poirier's fighting for the title. 
Oh, hold on. <laughs> Dude, what'd you take? Hold your on. funny pills no, today? Listen, listen. Hey, you should do wait, this wait, act at Dustin the improv. Fights mock hey, you should do this act at the hold improv. On. Hey, because you didn't get the news that Dustin's fight mock chat. They fights, announced that Saturday night. He fights That's Makachev. a nice next title okay, shot. Okay, but he fights mock in June. And then doesn't it make sense for Sarukian to wait in the wings, take some time off? That's what I would do. Right? That's what we would do, right? So let let Dustin and, and Makachev fight. Makachev has the has the edge in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. you get some time, mm -hmm. and you fight. You do Mark. it your way, right? This would make sense. Oh, but you're saying but that the <laughs> UFC is not going to do that. <laughs> Hold on, let me be. It doesn't you work be, that way. You be Dana, and we're, I'm going to be. Saruken. No, we're we're talking like it should work. I'm going to be Sarukin. You be Dana. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Now watch, Mr. Sarukin. Yes. Great performance. It uh, should have uh, been five uh, rounds, uh, and uh, you probably would have lost. Stuff, visual stuff. So you you etch this by the hair yes. of your teeth, yes. but yes. we would still like to offer you a title shot June first. No, because I want to see <laughs> Dustin fight Makichev. He's my friend. He's from Dagestan. So I will take winner from that one, please. Have a good day. Have a good night. Excuse me. I'm Where are you going? I'm going to go watch the greatest I fight of all time. I want Justin to meet. Holloway, you have yourself a good night. I want, well, I want to fight. What about Holloway? We'll be in contact. Oh, no. And then it just goes silent. Quiet. And then all of a sudden, you're like, but I thought. And then you're like, oh, I'm fighting at the Apex. Wait, wait. Hold on. I'm fighting at the Apex and it's Justin Gaethje in October. How, how do you know that Srukin was offered that title fight? Because he His came out said and so. said. His manager said. Wow. Yeah. And then they oh, said, oh, you don't want this? We're going to give it to Dustin? <laughs> <laughs> you thought I made that up? No, hold on. Oh, I thought it might dude, be a rumor. What did you like, eat the morning? But did they choose you are Dustin? They chose, odd one today, but dude. they chose Sarukian over Dustin? Yeah. Hmm. Why? Because he, he beat Charles. Like they yeah. thought that was Charles the number one, number one title one. fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then and then remember Makhachev's team was like, no, we'll fight Dustin. Bigger name, bigger fight. Yeah. Like that's what they want. Yeah. So and so the Dustin wasn't gonna get it, which is wild. Right. And they're trying to be like, all right, well, let's do this. Now remember, Dustin la you know, Dustin beat uh Saint Denise, but then Dustin lost to Gaethje. Now Dustin's getting the title shot. Yeah. It's just That's this crazy. crazy world we live in, dude. And you're still playing by the rules. Yeah. But we haven't played by the rules since 1993. Well, because what they're going to say is Srukian is a beast, but he's a grinder and it's not as exciting. And especially the matchup against Makachev. Wow. Grinder, grinder. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? Why would he turn it down? Sam Tripoli. Guys, I love you. Love you, Sam. You. Because... The, He's doing the right thing going, oh, I just I just got done with the fight, dude. You know, I just got done. I've been in camp. Like, Makhachev's a big you test. You give me like, a monster. Give, give me, but no, you, we need a monster. Makhachev's a monster. He's not afraid of the monster. He's fine before, went to decision. But he's saying, I want the proper camp. If I'm going to be champ, yeah. I need all cylinders firing. I'm making takes on When do they notice. want him to fight it? June 1st. That's fucking obnoxious. Dim the rules, dude. That's if you get offered a title stuff. shot, you take it. You, it's a, for the, Even first if you have all, the one weight eye. cut's a nightmare. It's all a nightmare. It's the, it's, it's the rules, though. I mean, June 1st? You know it's a night. You know it's you. a nightmare when you're at his level and you turn down a fight and then right, you don't you got a get month. a title shot. You got a what? You have... But you got to strike with iron hot. Huh? Look at Strickland. Like a lot of guys become champs this way. Look at, look at Biz being. Like guys take short notice fights uh. and it really works out. Yeah, I, I, I think that, uh, honestly, I think a guy like that, because I'm depleted. Like, I'm, I'm nursing half an injury. I Every can't suck this weight. Yep. It's a bitch. Every single fighter says that. Every single one. That's so obnoxious, though. Come on, guys. Like, you got to give him some time. He's a human being. Six weeks after coming right off, after coming off that fight camp with that, with that brutal weight cut, and, by the way, uh, training like that, and you're going to give him, so he has no time. Go right back into training. Right Come back on. into camp. Uh -uh. It's not like he was hurt. It's not like he's hurt. I think the it's weight It's just cut, the camps that beat you up. Yeah. The weight right. cut's not too bad for him. He's a but super But then we're going to give you a monster. We're going to give you your biggest test, and especially your biggest wrestling test. And you've already been down that road. You know what that is. Hey, here's what's Oof. cool, little bitch. Here's what's cool. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay. Hey, this is what the UFC does. Okay. On to the next guy. But they're going to, he'll be in the wings. He'll get his shot. He'll get his shot. He'll eventually get a shot. Yeah. Yeah, you just got to keep winning. I think it's smart to wait. 
I mean, when you're you get to fight the monster, sit in the sit in the cut. You think they're going to give him somebody else in the meantime? Probably Justin Gaethje, I would imagine. Because uh, they really they usually discipline you. They do. But it, it worked out for our boy uh, uh, DDP. Yeah. Remember, he turned down the fight yes. with Izzy. Yes. yes. You know, it still worked out for him. I think it's smart. And I, now, it only worked out because of injuries and timing, but it's rare. They're like, oh, oh, you don't want to do this? Okay. I think and then remember DDP, too. He's champ, so it's different. Yes. But, but I think Sarukian might have looked at him and said, I just can't, right? Like, I, I just physically can't right now. No, he could. The, the weight cut's not that big of a deal for He's not a huge 55er. So right. it's not like... You know these other guys getting tons of weight. Yeah, I just think he was like, no, like I want to, I want to relax. And then I'm, I'm sure they're like, hey man, you might have to find another. One. He's like, that's fine. Yeah, he, he's so gangster about it. He's like, yeah, cool, give me Justin Gaethje. Also builds his name bigger, yeah. fighting bigger star. You know, yeah. so beast, what a beast. He's 27. But they were planning on him, and then he turned it down. They went, all right, let's have Dustin. And then at the press conference, they gave Dana like a crumpled piece of paper, like you're passing a note to a girl in fifth grade, and he unraveled it and just ripped off all these dope fights. Strickland, Costa happened. That's then I happen. went on that rant, how they were, I was like, oh, fire paint, the hill to die on right now, man. It's, it's over. It's going to happen. They gave him a little bit more money, I'm sure. Okay. And then they announced Connor Chandler. That's going to happen, huh? It was about our time. We knew that. that was in, I wish they would have done a cool announcement, like I'm a video during Chandler. 300. I'm so happy for Chandler. Just waiting. Yeah. Wait and wait and wait. That's the fight, especially That's at his fight. age, like experience like that. Just yeah, it's just a wait. it's a good payday. Strickland's it's a pretty a big favorite over Paulo too. I saw. Is he? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's a good fight for him. Mm -hmm. Um, we sent I, I out the bat, we sent out the bat signal to uh, Chael Sonnen today. The great Chael Sonnen. He's now hopefully he doesn't act different because he's a Hall of Famer now. He's a Hall of Famer now. He no. He got inducted to the Hall of Fame. Now, not just him, though. The reason he's in the Hall of Fame is his fight against Anderson Silva was inducted to the Hall of Fame, not Chael Solo. So him and Anderson, their fight, that title fight, where, which is weird. You know, they show this huge highlight, and it shows him getting tapped out at the end. Either way, though, that fight got inducted to the Hall of Fame, not just Chael. Great fight. But still, he's in the Hall Great of Fame. Great fight. I remember that that's fight. Like, so that's cool. like MLB lending Pete Rose. Such a it's great It's cool, fight. right? Yes. God, it was such a great fight. I just really quickly want to just say one thing. Uh -oh. June 1st, Makachev fights Dustin Poirier, right? Is that what's going to happen? Yes. Okay. That's not a lot of time off for Dustin, but I'm really excited. Good for Dustin. Once again, just amazing human being. For Dustin, he's taking no matter what. 100%. He's been in the game too long. And he'll get paid, and it's all good. You get, and especially where, where, where he's at, like you had, they could tell you tomorrow you got to take it. Otherwise, he's never getting a title shot. Yeah. Um, can you go back to this? What people, uh, if you follow boxing at all, the m one of the more exciting boxing matches, if you follow it, is Artur Beterbiev oh, versus yeah. Dmitry Bivol. Big boy. Oof. Better than Danny and uh, Garcia this weekend. Monsters. Devin Haney? You know monsters. Devin Haney and Garcia fight yes. this weekend. I'm looking forward to that. I'm not. You're not? Just Why? Because Garcia. I think Garcia has a very good chance. Mm. I'll tell you why, Bob. Oh, Cool. Tell me. You want to bet on it? He's he's taller. Oh, daddy needs a new he's car. Taller, hood. He's hey, taller. No he's taller. He's stronger. Dude, so much stronger. And you and know, Haney got wobbled. I know, dude. He got wobbled by um uh our of the the who should be fighting at one twenty five, right? Yep. Um what's his name? The greatest. Um uh, man, I'm getting Lomachenko. Old. Thank you. Lomo. He got wobbled so by, he lost that by, fight. by a Lenaris. Lenaris, Lenaris got wobbled. Like a Mac truck. Oh yeah. my god, he's so good. Lenaris so fucking yeah. good. And both those guys are a lot shorter and smaller in some ways than our boy. So is Ryan Tank. Looks big. So is Tank. Tank's a nightmare. Yeah, Tank's smaller, Ta shorter Ta Tank's than Ryan. A, we can't. I know you can't. Tank's count in that. a different. Throw that out. I know. He's in a different, different level. League. He's greatness. Greatness. He's greatness. All day. You want to bet on it? You you got Haney over uh, Ryan? Yes. And I love Ryan. Por qué? How much? Por qué though? Why? Uh, I'm just, I don't know. I'm sure I just because Haney's so goddamn. I'm just gonna go on. A Haney's more skilled, there's yeah. no doubt, right? Yeah. He's more skilled all day. Um, the, but Garcia could do it. I like where your head's at. Yes, now daddy found a carbon fiber hood on offer up for okay. $400. <laughs> oh, you want to take my money now? And yeah, am I getting emotional about this? No, I, th I think you're on to something. I like it. I like where your head's at. Let's just do a thousand. I won't do it. I'll tell you why. You know what? Let's do five. I don't know where I don't know where Ryan's head's at, and I don't know what was going on with him before. Was that mushrooms? What was happening with him? We don't know. Mm -mm. 
or we do know. But let's bet five hundred. Let's you know what? Let's keep it simple. Bet nope, five because you might. How know about some this? Things. How about this? How about yeah? If how about if Ryan Garcia wins, I give you five thousand. If Devin Haney wins, you give me five hundred. Wow. Do you like that bet? Wow. Now my hood is four hundred, and it's local. Wow. I pick it up. No, because here's the problem. You might know some things. I don't know anything. I'm, no, I promise. And and um, I know. Uh, are you going to bet on it or not? Because then I'll give you my breakdown. Are you going to bet on it? No? I'm not going to bet on it. Okay. Here's the thing. Even if Ryan didn't have these mental issues going on and yeah. he was focused on this fight, he's not skilled. He skilled. would never beat Devin Haney. It's not happening. It just he's just it not is skilled. a complete nightmare of a matchup. So even if he was a hundred percent, yeah, it would not happen. Why is it? It's just there it's couldn't just, be a worse matchup. Really. It's an awful matchup. Why? Just because. So that's at him at Haney 100%. Is just so Devin Haney goddamn. is that guy. God. Ryan, he's very talented. You know, he has some speed, some power. Devin Haney is a different animal. Just a different animal. This fight won't be close, Brian. What? And I want to take you. I was willing to give you $10,000 for a 500. It won't be close. That was a stupid take. But I like this because it pays me money. It won't. There it, couldn't be a worse call. He's that good. He's that good, but you got to realize. That's if Ryan Garcia was 100%. It's a yeah, bad call. That's right. Ryan Garcia with what he's posting now, and I love Ryan. Ryan's a friend. Love Ryan. Yeah. This is an awful well, fight. Well, do we know him. what's going on with him? Is nope. it head trauma? What's going on? No, it's not head. I hate when people say that. No, it's not head trauma. Might be. It's, it, mm -mm. it's not head trauma. He's always suffered from certain things. He has. Always. Okay. His entire life. Okay. Yeah, it's not CT. That's yeah, okay. too much. That's Watch too easy. Wow. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. He so, was posting so, some weird stuff, too. Chill's here? The Hall of Famer's here. Oh my God! Hall of Famer, bring him up. It's just an honor. I get to I get to speak to a Hall of Famer. Man, I want to take a break and I want to just get on my bike and I want to ride. Oh, and it's That's nice out, dude. You got want, the wind in your face. I want face. the wind in my face, dude. But I want the kind of bike I don't have to pedal all the oh, time. Oh, you talking about that electric bike? I'm I know you eyeballed it electric. out there. You've electric. been eyeballing the one uh, electric sent to me. We're talking about electricebikes.com. Yeah. Man, if you guys want the best e-bike that you've ever seen. I don't want to spend $5,000, dude. Dude, the, they start at just $7.99 with the XP Lite. But is there is there a financing? Is there is there any kind of like, like can I do a, a payment plan? Yeah, we got it all, man. And they have a variety of models built for everybody. All right? They have up to 150 miles on one charge. I've never charged that bike out there. I ride it all the time Yeah, that's to lunch. a true story. You've never... You've I rode it home time. and back. You've never and charged I, it. Nonstop. That's, think about 150 miles on one charge. That's so long. That's crazy. It's great, man. And you're going to financing as low as $49 a month, plus savings on gas, parking, and maintenance. All it's right? super easy. Anyone can ride these things. Yep. The XP Lite's freaking zippy, affordable. It's a great way well, to start. Well, what about the Expedition? Because it's sturdy and versatile with cargo. It's like you can do all kinds. Of, it holds up to 450 pounds, I heard. Yeah, that one's yeah. fun. Your boy has the XP trike, and that thing's, you can fold it up, but it is sturdy. Wow. It's super sturdy. I could put you on the back, ride around, I get some you chicken have tendies. Put me on the back. And we got some tendies yep. at Air One. That's a lot of weight. It is, man. So if you're ready to go full throttle in the spring and have some fun with electric e-bikes, the number one selling e-bike in the nation, get your adventure started at electricebikes.com. That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C ebikes.com. And please mention that Fighter and the Kids sent you in the post-checkout survey. And you'll get a little bit of fun out of it. That's electricebikes.com. This weekend, uh, I will be at the Brea Improv Friday, Saturday. Come get some. Brea Improv, April 19 and 20. You know, I need some auto parts. Dude, are you going to drive down to Brea? You I'm better make sure that there. car is ready to go. And what my if it rains? Dude, my friends at O'Reilly Auto Parts, they got you covered because they are in the business of keeping your car on the road. That's all they want to do. That's all O'Reilly Auto Parts wants to do. They offer friendly, helpful service and parts knowledge you need for all your maintenance and repairs. And they got thousands of parts, accessories, and stock either in-store or online, so you don't have to worry if you're in a jam. And the team at O'Reilly Auto Parts can test your battery for free, in or out of the car if it needs replaced. I hear the gotcha. team is also knowledgeable, helpful, oh. accessible, friendly. I oh, hear they're that. nice. I yep. love them. I yep, yep, love yep. them. One I'm stop there shop. all the it time. It really is the one shop shop for all things auto do it yourself, and 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 you can find what you need in the store or online stop by o'reilly auto parts today visit them at o'reillyauto.com slash fighter that's o'reillyauto.com slash fighter what's up guys brandon you look great what's up brother you is. look great with similar shirts 
Man, I hear Brian, but I can't see him. Oh, I think he's I think he's blocked. I see now. Chin's You'll in the see way. me soon, buddy. You'll see me soon. I did my hair for you. I got recording in progress. Chin's giant head is in I the cut way. Cut my hair for you and everything. I mean, I'm we're talking to a Hall of Famer. First of all, I know. Can you believe it? Our, dude, so I was well, surprised you answered the call. Now you're in the Hall of Fame. So well deserved. So well deserved. Congratulations, number one. Number two, watching you accept the accolades, that public embrace, which you so deserve, and watching you probably get a little emotional, it made me love you it's even more as if that's possible, but you so deserve it, dude. I really appreciate that. I, you and Brendan were the first ones I te that text that I sent you. I mean, that seconds after I got done, I grabbed my phone. And that was the first one because you're the ones that asked me about it. I don't know if you remember this, but about yes. two months ago, maybe less, we had yes. this conversation. Yes, yes. Can I read it? Hey, yeah, you're like, hey, do you ever think you'll go in or something like that? And I, I did not. The real truth, I did. I kind of wanted to, but now I probably would have bet no. And anyway, so I was thinking to you guys, that was all. Well, we loved love it. it was man. that was that a um, was was that um, oh, oh, hold on, let me find it. Sorry, what was that sort of a surprise? Then you knew you would you you knew when you went there, you got you got accepted. No, so what? I'll tell you. Uh, sh short story, uh, kind of long, but I had done a voiceover for ESPN for the BMF belt. And it was literally just a voiceover and what the belt meant and, you know, how we got to Gaethje and, and Max. And so they told me, said, hey, since you did the voiceover, we're going to have you and Megan do the interview. And Megan will leave you every now and then I'll, I'll watch pay-per-views and I'll see her like before the third fight or something. She'll go down and she'll say something, some piece of inside information. I saw the boys in the back earlier and they look awfully loose, whatever it is. So I was going to do it with her. That was it. So we go down, and when I got there, I've got, like, the best seat in the house. I mean, the only one better than me is, like, where Rogan is sitting. And it had my name on the chair. And I thought, wow, for this little tiny piece, they put my name on the chair. So I sit down, and then everybody was nice to me. Dana came over, and Joe came over, and, and Mick and Sean. It was just everybody's treating me so nicely. I never pieced it together. In fact, when I was up there... The acoustics are kind of tough, and they were fighting for the BMF, the baddest. And so Annex said something about the bad guy, but I thought like the bad guy belt and blah blah blah. I didn't know it was me. I even thought to myself, bad guy. That's what they used to call me. <laughs> and then uh, Megan I... Olivi told me she goes, "You you don't get it yet, do you?" I said, "What's going on, Megan?" She said, "You're in the Hall of Fame." It was cool, man. It was a cool Dude, moment. So you, so that I wish I'd known that you found out then, right there, right then. Every Hall Dude, of Famer, right do, there. They do it every time. They never oh give you a heads God, up. Oh my God, man! They invite you like tar yeah. like Cowboy didn't know. It's on the spot. And you, you did look like a gangster. You look like a gangster. Thank you, buddy. And Thank here's you, what you man. texted us. You go, your mothers were wrong. Good yes. things do happen to bad people, and more mm -hmm. often than not, cheaters do win. <laughs> but right. you're not that guy. Yes, they do. No, I know your mother's told you don't cheat. Cheaters never win. Yes, they do. <laughs> they, they often win. They win lots. Ch Chael, you didn't cheat. No. You're not a bad person. I know. I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Are you surprised, Joe? Because the, the analogy would be if you know. In, obviously, we're boys, so you. You. I think you should have been in long ago. But the analogy would be if if baseball let in Pete Rose, right? Because after the Chael, because the Chael fight that they're showing, the Chael and Anderson fight. You tested hot after that fight, and then that fight's in the Hall of Fame, which it deservingly should be there. I don't think it should be a factor, but were you surprised by that? Did you think that would factor into things you just wouldn't get in because of that? I think that's relevant. Like, if somebody kept you out for, for failing a, a post for breaking the rules, like, yes, that, that would seem to me to be very reasonable. I think I would be unobjective if I couldn't uh, see that. And so... Um, and, and, and there's different wings too, by the way, like there's a way that this, the person goes in and this is like a fight goes in. So it's, it's a little bit of a, of a sidestep, but it was still a cool moment, right? You get the jacket and you go up there and Brendan, think about it from this perspective. Like we never have lost anything and then you get praised for it. Like, that's just not how it works. I mean, that, that's the moment that has, that's kept me up. That is the moment where I'll, I'll sit up and I'm, I'm soaking wet. You know, I just need those 90 seconds back. And, uh, so nothing's changed. I still didn't beat him, but now all of a sudden it's cool. <laughs> no, no, all of Chael, a sudden I Chael, feel totally taking, different no, about it. I don't like this conversation. Yeah. I don't like this where it's going. I this no, 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 no. I disagree with all of it. In fact, I even I even want to edit out the, the what you texted because it's taking away from who you are as a person and what you were able to do to this sport, which was have an impact. And that had nothing to do with anything other than your your personality, your spirit and your indomitable will to find a way to be the signal through the noise. We've had how many fighters 
in this in this game and you remain relevant you've continued to be a positive impact in this sport in about 50 different ways and most of all and especially as a fighter so i'm sorry but yeah you put yourself in there and you fought the greatest in many ways as ever and almost beat him and for my money as i was watching that i was reminded of how insanely exciting that sport was and you you were the first real trash talker in a lot of ways. I mean, the first guy where all of us went, this motherfucker, where people who didn't follow MMA were like, this guy is saying things like, I'm a Republican, I'm never on my back, I don't let guys get between my legs. We as dudes were like, I, when I met you, I didn't even know who you were. I was I was actually a little afraid. I was a grown man and I went, hey, I'm a fan. And you looked at me, we were at Meta Morris, and you went, Chael Sonnen, you got good taste. And I was like, God, that guy's so man. cool. All of us felt that way about Chael Sonnen. But Chael, to, so, to, to so let's, defense, not, let's not diminish the sheen that is well-deserved here. Fuck no, all that. No one's diminishing it at yeah. all. It has to be, it, it, you can't bring Chael on and avoid that topic. Yeah, that's you, fine. You can't. You're right. But the, the other argument too, Chael, is if we want to go through who's te tested hot for PEDs and go back in the day, I'm sorry, from <laughs> till USADA started, yeah. All the way back, nobody's getting in. It was just part of the sport. Nobody's getting it's in. It's literally part. It, it, was, it, was, it was no different than, you know, a mouthpiece. Or it was really part of the game. <laughs> yeah, it was part of the game. Yeah, that's yeah. all it is. I mean, that's a fact. It was, it was very cultural. There was, uh, I, and on that one was, was interesting. So testosterone was legal. I, te and I just, just to go back, but this is for fun, not, not to redo something, but testosterone was legal. It was right there in, in the rules in California, and you had to disclose it. Now, the, the reason I point that out in Nevada, by example, where testosterone is also legal, you had to uh, preemptively have a therapeutic use exemption. California did not have that. You had to disclose it. So I, I only tell you that because I tested positive for a legal substance and I became the face of TRT and other guys started using it. They started abusing it. I mean, that, that's all athletes start to abuse. Right. It's one of these situations that house of cards comes tumbling down. They, they, they pulled the whole thing. But when they hit me in California, that wasn't right. I had that signed and dated. And Brendan, you'll know about this. When you go to the weigh-ins, there's, there's a check. They check your skin. And they get the pulse out. And sometimes there's an eye exam. They asked you right there, have you taken any medications? And then there's, it's two weeks or whatever whatever they put mm -hmm. down. I wrote testosterone. It was the only thing I wrote down. Wow. Testosterone. Oh, and I wrote Ambien. It was legal. I mean, it was signed off by the doctor and executive director. When I go in for my hearing, I bring that. It's all that I have. I go, here's your rule. This is signed by him, the executive director. And they go, yes, that's true. But don't you agree that that is a performance enhancer? I said, that's the whole reason I took it. I would have never <laughs> taken it except that it was supposed to enhance my performance. And I felt like it did. Like, that. yes, I do agree to that. It was one of these weird things. So they go, all right, we're going to give you six months. Is like, no, 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 this isn't traffic court. There, right. there is no six months. It's right. a two-year ban or it's no ban. I did not break your rule. And moving forward, they allowed guys to do what I did, as long as you disclosed it. I remember. Nevada State everyone got way. exemptions. I remember e that. Everyone yeah. I trained with, yep. I tried getting one. They denied yep. me, but everyone I knew had an yep. exemption. Yep. So that uh, yep. that's depending, that's what you want people to know. Right. Yes. Yeah. Depending but, on the state. But let's go. Let's 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 go to. Um, what, what did you feel when you, when you were looking out there? Cause I remember, man, I, I, you've done some things that get me tugging my emotional heartstrings when they said, if your dad was still here, what would you say? And you said, I tried and you started kind of choking up and it was so awesome, man. It was just, I saw your whole relationship. I, it, to me, it kind of encapsulated what sports are about in a lot of ways. Father, son bonding. I just took my son to wrestling yesterday. It's such a, it, for me, it's like, it's the whole deal. So, uh, that's awesome. But watching you. And just kind of a man who has arrived in a way. What a what a moment to look out and get that applause and to realize in a lot of ways, man, it's very few people, very rare air to get there. What, it's the what, rarest, but I also think yeah. too, as a Chael felt like he has a huge fan base. I think for most of it went, yeah. Of course. Yeah, of course. Like, I wasn't surprised. I'm like, I didn't even think about it. I was like, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's news to me that you just found that out. I'm sorry that I'm that ignorant about it, but can you tell us? Well, you, you guys are, I love being around you guys. You guys, you guys always lift me, and I really appreciate that. But, Brian, it is exactly what you thought. So, you know, they told me I'm going to do this interview, and I'd seen Megan do it before. She does it. She, like, stands on the apron of the octagon where the ring car girls hold up the thing. That's where Megan does these pieces. Of, so when they brought us down cage side, Everything was fine, but they brought us the exact way that the fighters walked. And 
so, you know, their che fans are cheering and whatnot. And I remember walking through it, and I got a straight face. I, I haven't earned that adoration. But I was thinking, I never in my life thought I would get to make this walk again. This is pretty cool. That was just an added bonus is the way they got us to the cage was the same walk that the fighters did. And, uh, yeah, so then when they said, and they played it up on the big screen, and, yeah, man, it was it really was something very cool. I didn't know it was going to make me high and excited. Like, I couldn't even sleep the night that it happened. I, I had a red eye out the next morning. I was fired up. I was waking my wife. I'm like, come on, let's we got to go, baby. So cool. <laughs> I'm just telling you, like, I didn't know I would have that reaction, but yeah, it was cool. I mean, how how often in life does anybody tell you good job? How often do you, do you ever get recognized? It's amazing. But, but think about this, Jail. Not only, not only do they acknowledge you, not only do they acknowledge you, they acknowledge you on the biggest night in UFC history at UFC 300. So just think the magnitude of that they decide not only to do it but do it at 300 and then when you think of you know the bad guy you also got to think of that night like to me what max holloway did is the greatest knockout in ufc history you know so like you have that on the books you have alex doing his thing you have this stack card and then you get in the hall of fame i mean it's insane yeah yeah Oh. It did feel like that. My my wife had said the same thing. Like, hey, that was kind of special that they made you part of it. And um, yeah, man, it was it was cool. I, I was I was leaving. You were the first ones I texted. And uh, Glenn Jacobs at ESPN said something to me. How would you feel? How was that or something? And I said I hope because it was a surprise. So I said I hope my mom's watching. I don't think my mom's watching, and she wasn't. My mom yeah. missed it, but she went back and, and she went back and bought it just so she could see those two minutes. Love it, <laughs> yeah, man. That's love that's it, brother. Incredible. But let's get down the nitty gritty. UFC 300. Your your yeah. takeaways. What would you think of the card? Did it deliver okay. like you thought it would? Did you have expectations? Okay. Oh, well, like I thought it would. Bro, I don't even. I can't believe that they keep me around giving an analysis. I, apparently, I know nothing about the sport. Like here, let me give you an example. From the first time they set that octagon up in Mobile, Alabama, in 1993. We started to learn the importance of grappling, and that was really never called into question. Even if you had a one-off, this is for the hardcore fans, but Maurice Smith over Mark Coleman, even if you have a one-off, we went right back to understanding how important grappling was. And I was a lifelong wrestler. My classmates didn't treat me special. Nobody did. I didn't know that I was walking around with a, a, a devastating skill until Dan Severn in 1994 went in and made the finals against Hoist Gracie. So my point is how much we've learned. And we really did start to understand, you know, it was a prerequisite. You must have an ability to grapple. And all of a sudden, along comes a guy named Israel Adesanya. And mm -hmm. Adesanya did it the other way. He had the striking and not much grappling, but he was a good athlete and was willing to learn, and that inspired Alex Piera. And I think I would throw Francis into that same category just because he liked boxing. Sure. Surreal Gone got to an interim championship, and he came from a kickboxing background. I mean, all of a sudden, guys, how the tables have turned. And I look at Alex Piera. That's an amateur. He has an amateur's record. He's done it 12 times now. He's only done it eight in the octagon. But within those eight, he's captured two world titles, and he's beaten five world champions Insane. and if i was to tell you that alex pierre who's never had a wrestling match he's never had a grappling match he is not a black belt is the greatest to have ever done it you would roll your eyes but if he became champ 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 and he is the first person ever that could actually do it where we stand back and go yeah he actually might be able That's to best shot yep. if he did that we're not out having a conversation on who the goat is we will just refer to him as the goat and well, to refer to a guy who, what we thought we knew back in 1993, he breaks all these rules, and we have to stand back and say, and you're the goat. He might be. That's a that's a tall order, though. We I think with 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 respect, and with the exception of someone like Glover, I do, have we seen him. You know, the, they're very quiet. You're about missing a guy the like, point, um, Pete. Yeah, you're missing I, the point. Missing the the point. point is, is that he's got he was there. able yes. to capture the middleweight title, the light heavyweight title, and he's the only guy in the history of the sport since 1993 when it started. He's the only guy who's even going to have the chance yeah. to be the heavyweight yeah, champion. Understood. So the three-time yeah, champion. Understood. I um, mean, Brian, Brian, think think of how great George St. Pierre is, but. You know, he won 70, 185, but none of us thought he could go up to 205. Right. It was John Jones at that right. time, just for example. Right. Or Daniel Cormier when he gets the heavyweight and the light heavyweight. But we knew he couldn't make the weight class of 185. It's it's one of those things where a guy can only go so far. Even Henry Cejudo wanted to try, try his hand with Volkanovski, and I think we're all in agreement of how that would have worked out. Alex, he really does want the Tom fight. That wasn't just like, you know, he's high on adrenaline. He yeah. tried to get the Tom fight at 300. Remember when he was putting out that, yes. that cryptic yeah. equation, you know, a tough three one. plus 30 equals 300. 
Yeah, but he really would do it, and he'd be the first person where we'd stand back. And I am not saying I think he could beat Tom, but he'd be the first person we go, yeah, give him a shot. He might be able to beat him. That's a that's He's great. Yeah, that would be the one fight I would definitely have to, with all due respect, take Aspinall for a lot of reasons. No, we all would yeah, be. You're yeah, missing yeah, the yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the only like yeah. Tam, Tom Aspinall can't go to 205. Right. Tom Aspinall can't go to 85. It's impossible. I understand. Alex is the only guy that no, 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 listen, even listen, the matchups listen, tough with zero body percent body fat with with dick yeah. skin on his tummy. He's that tight. He's 236. OK, so this is yep. a giant man. He's a giant ant man with ass for days. And he just looks like he's carved out of fucking stone. He looks like Stonehenge yep. came to life. He really does. But what we're dealing and, with yeah. is it's it's so rare. And I don't think people understand. I, and, not only what Alex is doing, we'll never see again, I don't think, and we got to stop and smell the roses. Like What yeah. Alex has achieved in this short amount of time and possibly at heavyweight is absolutely insane. Then also, what happened to Max Holloway on the card? You got to realize where he's at in his career, and now he's in rarefied air where his next fight, he can call the shots. He's at the Connor level. He's yeah. at the, the Diaz level. He did that off this BMF title, where I didn't even take the BMF title serious till now. It was just yeah. a thing. But now, once Max got a hold of it and the way he won the title, yeah. dude, I mean, it's insane. I, I, I'm still going back to, I'm, I'm going to be a pain because I, 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 of course, Alex Pierre is an amazing human being and an amazing fighter. We still have not seen him with anybody, like even to see him with Uncle Aya, for example, who everybody's sure. really quiet about, just to see how he would deal with a wrestler who could put him on his back. Well, he fought Jan. Jan took him down. Jan, and he still yeah, beat him. Yeah, that's the thing. Jan's no slouch. Jan's a... Jan can grapple. Yeah, Jan can grapple. Jan's huge. Jan can Jan's grapple, and he's very him. big. So you can't you say he's never fought look, a grapple. You want to know who looked really yeah, good? Right. Guys, you want to know who looked really right. good, and he lost, but Raychik, that Alexander Raychik came back, he yeah. looked great. And by the way... I think he could have maybe stolen number one contendership from Uncle Iav. I suppose we'll never know. But I think if he would have won, Rachik was beating Prohaska the one round that they had completed. So I, I'm, I'm praising Prohaska as well. But I don't think the Prohaska is going to go back into a rematch with Piera. So I think that Uncle Iav likely does find that shot. And there would be a little bit of a disappointment there. I mean, right? I mean, it's a very different thing. Uncle I is a little more reserved. I like to have some fun in the division. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, Big if decision I'm, to make. If I'm the UFC, and clearly the UFC is kind of aligned with me, we're doing whatever we can to to, to throw some speed bumps we in are. Clive's we way. Are. We don't want to. So, yeah. so if, and this is why I like what Alex is doing. He's like, I'll go to heavyweight. I'll go to heavyweight. Uh, and Clive, you fight, insert tough matchup. Mm. Get him out of the way. Give him some <laughs> speed bumps. Because yeah. let's say and Clive's your champ. We're, we're missing the, one of the top five biggest stars in the UFC. Yeah, we can't, you, you we don't can't see sell him. Grind it out. You no, don't want to see Uncle Iav kind of get him ground. We can't him sell out it. Five rounds. We can't yeah. sell it. And you take out a massive star. Yeah. So I'm tossing and some Brendan, speed bumps. Yeah. Brennan, if you were to guess, I mean, Bo Nickel was on the main card for a reason. And I don't know if that's just to shine him up because he's good. I don't know about that. I mean, it's kind of hard to bring him in from the biggest mismatch, 20, 25 to 1. That's never happened before. The biggest mismatch into a top 10, I, I think that's a stretch. So what are they going to do with them? Everyone wants to see Chemayev, but they follow those ranks. I mean, I'm just saying, what do you do with him? What was the point of putting him there? I'll, t I'll tell you what you they do. And uh, I was talking about this on the shop show. I think what's going on with Bo Nickel, I'm all about bringing a guy up slow and building him and stuff like that. But he's done that. He's done that. Was he have three, four fights now? He did in the contender series. He's beyond that. Now, when you get to a guy like uh, Brundage that he fought, right? C uh, Cody Brundage. When you get it to a guy like that who's had, he's a seasoned vet in the UFC, he has 10 fights. When you get to that level, it's 2024. Everyone's pretty damn good. Like that, that, that Brundage wasn't going to be a cakewalk. So I think if you're going to put him up there with these seasoned vets, just give him a top 15 guy because at Bo right. Nickel's level, I'd rather see him struggle against uh, Strickland or Paulo Costa or Whitaker. He's he's not going to ram through and walk through everybody at this point. Now that he's fighting right. vets in 2024, everyone's pretty fucking good, man. So why sure. why keep this build going? All right, we know he's talented. Let's get him against some better guys. The better guys are going to give him more of a fight, but have him ranked. Because if he fought a ranked guy and had this performance – we're all like, yeah, Bo, Bo's the next guy. Bo's the man. But because you gave him a tough guy who's not ranked that nobody knows, everyone goes, oh, Bo, no, he's not that good. So I think they're doing him a disservice. If you're going to put him on on 300, give him a, a name because you're giving him a tough test anyway.
And I see it the same way. I, I th Make the match you can make when you can make the match. I, I don't understand. Why do you got a bunch of guys under contract and then you're afraid to match them up if they're not ranked? I mean, there's other numbers. Let me give you an example. The rankings room has never been disclosed to us. For a while, we thought it was a computer, kind of like the BCS. Now we found out that it's people and they get together and they submit by 9 a.m. on Tuesdays. It's a little bit weird, but there's other numbers. I don't believe the people in the ranking room think they know 15 people that can beat Bo. They just won't rank Bo until he beats somebody in the top 15. It's like, well, right off the bat, that's a little bit weird. And secondly, we got other numbers such as he's six and oh. How about look, we look at how many rounds he has lost, which is none. We look at how many fights he has lost, which is none. Like there's there's other ways to start doing some of these matchups, but yeah, I don't get it. I do not get the concept of we got all these guys under contract, but we can only make these guys together and these guys together. Says who? Make the match you want to make. Who would you, who would but, you but, give but, hold on, nickel? But to, to, to that point too, it actually does Bo a disservice by you not rank him, which we know he's one of the top 15 in the freaking sure. world, by you not ranking him, it's going to be tough for anybody in the top 10 to accept a fight with Bo because they're going, yep. no, why? He's not even ranked. But if they rank him 10, now those guys, 11 through 15, or 9, 8, and 7 are going to accept the fight. But if there's no number next to his name, everyone's like, no. But isn't it possible that they're looking at Bo as this diamond in the rough who simply just does need more time in MMA, especially striking, so that so that we don't have a flu because when they were crashing like that together he and cody you could get you could see a situation where someone like brundage could could have thrown something caught him anybody can get caught when you're clashing like two rams like that and you saw that in the beginning but to your and point I think, B, anybody yeah. can do that yeah so have them do it against ranked name guys right don't have them oh, do I it see. against brundage so he doesn't who lose. has the skills yeah, yeah. You know, but again, the point to me it was if you're going to put him on there, put him against the name everybody yeah. knows. We know it's going to be tough for him. From here on out, everyone's going to give him a everybody's fight. Gonna be a He's not going to yeah, cakewalk or, like it was the contender series. Right. So give him people we, we know. Yeah. 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 That's that's a, that is a good. Point. I, it, it, it just it seems as though right. It seems as though I've never really seen anybody build. I I know promoters love to use that term. Well, I'm going to bail him. I'm going to bring him on along slow. And then you do, and as soon as it works, and he turns the gun on you and wants more money, or you lost track of your contract anyway, and he's only got one left, and now you can't use him for the fight. I mean, it just feels weird. Like if you come to the UFC, you got to know how to fight. It's just not the place you come for experience. And sometimes you, you do. I get that. Kane Kane only had a couple of fights, and BJ Penn debuted in the UFC. Like. There is exceptions, but they also weren't protected. They got thrown right in the deep end, man. If you're here, you're here. And if we got to look out for you, then you're not supposed to be here. Oof. Yeah, no, but, yeah. but Chael's right. Like when, yeah. when That's it's why tough. I think managers and fighters need to realize once you get to the UFC, and this Ed Soares told me this a long time ago, once you're in the UFC, Fair you game. should accept every single fight. And if you if you if if they call you and the it's a bad matchup, that's on you. You're not ready for the UFC. Mm. So yeah. you should, once you sign, that'd be like going to the NFL, yeah. be like, man, this Pittsburgh Steelers defense really good. I'm, <laughs> I'm just not ready. You're right. Because if right. you're drafted into the NFL, we assume yeah. you can play yeah. at the NFL. That's how rate. good the UFC is. There is a difference. You're right. You're 100 percent right. Yeah. If you if you are in that rare air called the UFC, you got to be ready for whatever is thrown yeah. at you. That's a good point. Yeah. And, and that's why I'm saying other numbers for Bo do support. Like his ranking's not there, but he's beaten UFC guys. Like yeah. if what we all just said is true. He's beaten UFC guys. And Matt, he's played all the UFC guys. As a matter of fact, he's never lost a round to these UFC guys. So, I mean, he fits in the mix somewhere. But Ryan, I think you were starting to ask me my dream match for Bo. Somebody else suggested Kamara Usman, and just because of their wrestling background, that interests me. It, it's not necessarily the one I want to see. I'm just letting you know that's floating around, and Kamara seems a little more uh, willing to do things right now. Chemayev. I mean, Chemayev's a fight for whatever reason. Those guys are about the same age. They got the same record of undefeated. They both came on with a splash. Chemayev's the fight. And oh, Chemayev wow. started to speak up on him. Chemayev said, I don't care. Give me, give me the kid. He said it. Oh, Chemayev said he does not care, and I believe him. And Bo's been calling him out since he was even officially yep. signed to the UFC. He came right. on. He yep. did a food truck diary. And I was like, who would you like to fight first fight? He's like, Hamzat. I was like, whoa. And he's like, tell me where he beats me. I'm like, holy shit, this kid's for real. Yeah. Like he, he's, and there's a beef he's there. Not afraid of Hamzat wrestling. does acknowledge him. I think there's that. I'd like to see him versus Strickland as well. I think Strickland's a fun fight. It's sure. a weird dynamic. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of things they can do with him. Yeah. And they will. I guarantee well, you, after this, he starts getting some tough fights. Yeah. And, and Strickland is such an anti wrestler. You know, Strickland seemed like the one that probably would have most likely called him out. Just, I don't care about ranking. I want you. I'm sick of hearing about okay. it. But Sean is now. 
he, he's taken up for himself a little different than he used to. And I think he has the right. I, I think that Sean Strickland's done some really wonderful things. And if he wants to speak up on his own behalf just a little bit, I think he's right to do that. He did this a week ago and he did it publicly, which generally backfires. He won. They sat him down. They said, we agree with you. We looked at some numbers and got that worked out. And yeah. I don't know, man, whoever would have thought Sean Strickland was going to be a culture warrior. I mean, we all <laughs> thought he'd be, he'd be canceled by now. Yeah, not real. Sean. Not Sean. He's got a seat at the table. Let, I want to go back to Bo for two seconds. If you're uh, – when, when, when Bo – to solve that wrestling problem, there are guys that can obviously stand and bang with him because uh, they're, they're, they're actually better at, at, at you know striking, but – when you are when you are dealing with Bo Nickel and that wrestling problem, and you as a wrestler, well, I'd like to know, are you t if you're cornering a guy like Strickland in camp? Are you saying never let him close his hands and stand up, stand up, stand up? That's all you can do. Work on your takedown defense, and if he does, he takes you down, stand right up, stand right up, stand right up. Is that the only thing you can do with a guy like this? How do you how do you deal with that that crazy wrestling? I love that theory that you just said. I, I actually have a philosophy that if you're if you're trying to be the anti wrestler, uh, you can give him real problems on his feet. You can learn about side wizards and underhooks and get your hips under control, or you can scramble when you hit the mat. And I I just tell you that because if you put all your focus into one of those, you would succeed at one of them. And if you put all your focus into both of those plus takedowns yourself, you're not going to get that that good. Right. And. Oh, we had a guy named Matt Horwich, and you could take Matt down anytime you wanted if you guys remember him. But when you He's hit done. the mat, he would do, Brendan, it was the same defense every time. He'd straight arm you. He called it the Heisman, the way they would block in football. He would straight palm you on your head, create distance. He's soaking wet, slippery, and he'd be right back out. And as a wrestler, it was a lot of energy to take him down. If I can't keep him there and get a couple of good breaths in, it's not worth it. Right. And... I mean, he he wore out more wrestlers. He beat three NCAA All Americans, but he wore them out. They would take him down. He would straight. It was the same yeah. stand up. Yeah. But yeah, Brian, to your point, I don't think you need the the perfect guard and the rubber guard, and the, the, I think you just need one of those. Yeah. And I think that Pierre would support me in that. By the way, I mean that yeah. is not a masterful grappler, but he's got two three things that he does, and he can do them to everybody. That's that's that seems the the only thing you do, right? You just work on being an anti wrestler and don't let him. But you know, but you it's know, the scrambles. Connor did that for a while against Khabib. Iaquenta, who's a D one wrestler, not a very good thing. But I remember Iaquenta just kept stopping that takedown. He just didn't yep. let Khabib take him down and people forget that but but also like connor was really good at not letting khabib at least for the first two rounds close his hands but i mean you give him some credit for it i mean it's not after a while it's khabib no, he, You're not he, gonna, did, he did the best against he khabib. did the best yeah uh chael uh what would you do next with uh max holloway now that he's coming off okay. what i think is the best knockout of all time hmm. I have a different opinion, and Brendan, maybe this is off of never being a champion. I don't know, but when I look at these guys, I mean, I love the world championships, but I hold the Olympic Games to a higher standard. Why? Because they come along every four years. And my only point being, I like all the champions. I like the interim champions. Some guys don't. I don't care what word comes in front of champion. If you want to say featherweight or heavyweight, it doesn't matter to me. It's champion. BMF champion is meaningful. Brendan, you get participation just so you know. Dana, that is an actual belt. When Dana has a contract with ESPN to bring them X amount of title matches, he can bring them the BMF just so you know, and it satisfies the contract. I mean, I'm letting you know, like it's, it's actually a title. Wait, hold, I, but, I but hold on, Chael, to interrupt you there. But Max came out and said, you know, obviously uh, he goes, you guys have been marking our fight, the BMF, at, at BMF title, like it's a real title fight. I should get pay-per-view points. That was Max's yeah. words. So I don't think to they're getting paid like a championship fight. And Max is wrong. Justin did. Because you have to defend it. See, Masvidal never figured this out. Masvidal could never figure out why they didn't have him defend it. That's why they didn't have him defend it. They didn't it pay. brings you in on the participation point. Wow. So Justin was treated like a champion. And the only thing that was off, and this is a little bit off, they, they, they got the pound allowance. And that I can't explain. They had the five rounds. They had the title. They had the every everything that the title had, except they got the pound. So I'm just the way your mind works. In case you want to know that, yeah. But it's a very big deal because Max Holloway was the odd man out. Max Holloway had nowhere to go. He was clearly the number one contender. We can't put him in there uh, with Volk again. In fact, their third fight was the most lopsided. It's the only one that even got stopped and had absolutely no controversy. What are you going to do with them? So then they built a Poria up. The only way they'd ever build a contender up with Max there, which is to keep him away from Holloway. 
Everybody else runs into Holloway. He beats him. We're stuck in the same spot. They kept Tapori away from him. He was the odd man out to the point. I just want to remind you guys, nobody asked to see Max versus Gaethje. Correct. Max didn't ask for it. Gaethje didn't ask for it. The fans didn't ask for it. The UFC was a little bit desperate with the way the card was going, and they put those guys together. So we don't care what we do with Max. because We don't have a, anything we can do with him at 45. He went from the odd man out. That's all. The, all those backhanded. I was just trying to prove that point to tell you he is now the most sought after. Yep. I mean, I understand that Dustin is going to go against Islam, but had that not been done, Islam would have been going for Max. Max had the Taporia business, and my whole contention, and thank you for listening to that, is I think Max is wrong. I think he needs to understand he now has a title. He doesn't have any any beef with Taporia. He can stay right there at one fifty five. He can stay right there in the fence. I mean, let me give you guys a scenario. And this one's just for fun, not a prediction. But Max has only called one guy out in his entire career. That's Connor. He keeps saying he wants that rematch with Connor. I want the rematch with Connor. Imagine Connor beats Chandler and Max still has the belt and says, I'll put it up. There's your rematch. Yeah. And Connor would take that for the wow. BMF. A lot wow. of moving parts there. I'm just suggesting for you the I like power it. of that I like title. It. Ooh, well, I let like me ask that. you this, Chael. If, if Max were to fight Topuria, say, in the next four months, yep. and let's say he were to lose, it, does the BMF title automatically go vacate nope. does he lose that nope. so it's nope. is it only at 55 so he could still fight to period lose and then fight connor at 55 for the bmf title he could do that or he could return to 45 see this is where it gets very interesting and these aren't shields rules this was tested uh george mosball had the belt went and fought kamara so they decide they're gonna fight for kamara's belt okay fine kamara wins but George keeps the belt. George goes into the Colby fight as the BMF champion, but it was just it was just a box. You got to check with the commission. They did not check it, so therefore it was not a title fight. Oh wow! George wasn't paid participation because the belt wasn't up. He wasn't defending, but Colby wasn't uh, eligible to win it. So Max, could, that's what I'm saying. If I'm to pour in, I'm going to fight Max. Great, put your belt up. If I'm putting mine up, then you put yours up. I would make a big deal about that, but that's. Because I like those belts. I I think they mean something. To watch Max act like this isn't even real, Justin kind of had that same attitude. It's like, guys, you are the feature match of 300. This is the people's main event. Without about that it. belt, yeah. you're not. Yeah. We needed that belt coming in. Going out of it, we understand how great it was. But coming in, we needed that belt. And, and for some reason, those guys aren't showing it the same respect. And I think it's a miss. I think that Max is in very high demand and could do a number of different things. He's a champion. I think he forgets that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. But I also think no one's explained it to them like you are. Like, I was under the impression that, you know, it's this kind of thing the UFC came up marketing-wise. So the casuals go, oh, a belt? They don't know BMF, light heavyweight, middleweight. They just see a belt on the line. They think world championship yep. fight. So I figured it was a market employee by the UFC. I never really <laughs> took the belt that serious. Like, all right, it's just something they're tossing on to hype the fight. But then when I saw Max and the way Max fought and just, I'm like, all right, now I respect the belt. Forget calling it BMF belt, call it the Max Holloway belt. Like now he, yeah. he, he embodies exactly what that is, mm -hmm. you know? So n now I'm all on board for it. But I, the way you're explaining it, I don't think anybody's explained it to Max, Justin, or Jorge like that. Yep. Yeah. I think I that's fully the agree. issue. Uh, Osborne will never figure, if he's listening now, this is the first time, Osborne will never figure out why they weren't having him defend it. And that's so funny. But, but it is it is a very big deal. And Justin would like if Max would talk to Justin and go, hey, Shield just said, is that true? Did you get participation on 300? He'll tell him yes. Yeah, but see, that's the key. You you've got to put it up. Like, let's just say, guys, just for fun, let's say Max goes and fights Taporia and it's for Taporia's belt. Max does not get participation. You get participation to defend. So Max has this is what Mosbrow never understood. Max has to insist. He needs to go to the meeting. He needs to bring it to the press conference. He needs to put it up. It's for the belt. They'll make it for the bell, but you have to you have to understand the inner workings of the politics to get to that point. It's very interesting, but it's a real title. That's all my contention is. All my contention is this is a real title, and Max should be very proud. That was a historic night, and he won a title. Come on, man. How, how many of those do you get? And I, I think what makes it more legit of a title is you're getting paid like it's a title. And that's what guys aren't yes. understanding. I yes. think guys would put a lot more weight into the BMFL title or BMF title if they realized that they can get paid like a champion. They just, yes. I didn't realize it. Max, I'm sure, oh, doesn't. Yeah. Justin didn't. Yeah. Jorge didn't. Yep. So that's, that's interesting. I, I wonder yeah. if Max, yes. but, yeah. I, I, well, guys like Max, as they get older, it gets real hard to suck down, back down 45. 55 felt so good. It looked so much better on him. 
Do you, do you think that, that that weight cut is a significant thing now that he's older? And, and well, is he going to stay at 55 as a result? And that's the whole thing. Like, he, he kept talking like he had to go after Tapori. Even in his interviews leading up to this, Max was very clear, I'm going to beat Justin, and then I'm going to go back. And, and, you know, that was his belt. That was the one that he lost. And I understood that from a competitive background when it was Volkanovski. Yeah. It's not Volkanovski. He's got no grievance with Tapori. Now, he can go out and create one. That's fine if you're a competitive guy. I'm just saying, he's got no grievance with it. Let him go have his run. Taporia needs Max, guys. Let me tell you how much Taporia needs Max. Taporia is excellent. He's undefeated. He's handsome as hell. He's like the Brendan Schaub of, of 145. <laughs> but guess what? He got nobody to fight. Right. He has nobody to fight to the point that a 35-pounder from Arizona named O'Malley called him out. And everybody stood back and goes, well, I don't have a better idea. Like, we're not going to do that, but we're not going to say no because we don't have a better idea. He needs Max. That's so and, Brian, I love what you're saying. Yeah. Stay at 155. Have a few more calories. Be a happier person with a smile on your face. But let me ask you this, Jail. If the reason I think Max should fight Doperia, I mean, now we know Makachev's not a, a thing because he's fighting Dustin Pore. But if you're in Max's camp, isn't the bigger fight Topuria than a 55 fight? Like, the Conor fight's not happening anytime soon. He's fighting Chandler. We know that. That's going to International Fight Week. So that that could be in the future. But for what's next for Max, if we're looking at the lay of the land, all right, Makachev for the title, that's gone. The only other title we can fight for is that, you know, against uh, 45 with Topiria. So wouldn't Topiria yeah. be a big – and even if Makachev was available and they went up to Max said, all right, Topiria at 45 or Makachev – wouldn't you say Topir worldwide's a bigger name than Makachev? Bigger Probably. draw? I mean, uh, may, uh, possibly. I've been surprised how big. I mean, Spain got behind him in ways. The soccer players all the way up to the president. Like, that country really did back him. So you could be right. <laughs> Let me tell you, though. That would be checkers. Let's look at it from chess. If, if Max goes down and fights Topir and beats him, Max draws right back into Volkanovsky. The fourth time, man, that's a really tough sell, yeah. in my opinion. It's Let me give you another sell. scenario. Yeah. Max stays at 55. He makes it clear he's standing at 55. If Tapori would like a shot, he can come up to 55 and contest it there. That'll never happen. But then he saves face. He starts talking about Connor. He starts talking about the Connor versus Chandler fight. Then all we do to do that is to take the eye off the ball. We wait about five or six weeks till Justin Gaethje is healed. We walk his ass in and we announce the rematch. It's Max versus Gaethje at Madison Square Garden in November. I think I could find more matches for him that are bigger 100%. draws at 55 than I could at 45. 100%. 100%. That's so much smarter. Stay at 55. Matt, you're, you're definitely in the wings. I mean, if if Connor beats you know uh, Chandler, I would yep. love to see. Love to yeah, see. Yeah, there, there's more money to be had for him, at depending 55. on how much more he wants to fight at 55. Yeah. There's a lot more stars in 55. Also, to your point. 45, the road's going to stop because you beat Topiria, Volkanovski's yeah. next, and he's <clears throat> waiting in the wings. Yeah. And how much would a fourth fight sell? The UFC knows this. If we're talking about this, the UFC sure as hell knows He also it. looks so good. He looks so big. He's so much bigger than I thought. Like, I thought that yeah. uh, Justin was way bigger, and I, I saw them together. I was like, well, I mean, uh, Max looks bigger than Justin and, and has no problem at that weight class. No problem. He's I ridiculously out, good. I went out to 299 in Miami, and it was, I, George Masvidal had threatened me. So I have like this threat over my, and I'm looking for Masvidal. So I wasn't quite on my oar. And for whatever reason, guys, like, it was like a nervous tick. Every fighter that I saw, I brought up Gaethje Max. Hey, what do you think of Gaethje Max? And I get done with that conversation. I turn to this, hey, what about Gaethje and Max? I just kept doing it. Well, I ended up asking about eight or nine guys, 100%. All took Max. And I was leaning Gaethje and wow. Gaethje was the favorite. All the fighters keep saying Max. So I eventually start saying, why? And they're basically contended that Gagey brings a storm. You usually look around and nobody's left standing. They thought Max could still be standing, have the cardio to outpoint him in the later rounds. So then I asked guy number 9, 10, 11. I started asking the gals and the guy. All the fellow fighters took Max. And they predicted like that, that it would just be volume, that it would be rough and tumbling back and forth and no grappling, but that eventually he would wear him down. Gaethje did get worn down in similar situations. Dustin Part 1, Eddie Alvarez, just by example. A lot of guys thought that Max just had the skills to duplicate that. It turned out they were right. Yeah. Yeah. Would you, would you uh, move it on from Max, what would you think of Kayla Harrison's performance? It was great. I got a little bit of insider information there. Uh, I was sitting with the PFL 
We're at the uh, Hard Rock in Florida, and we're about to do the press conference for Bellator versus PFL. So we even had executives at the table. We were having a meal, and we're going over some of the stuff. And one of the things that came up was Kayla and how we were going to get Kayla and Cyborg together now that the merger between PFL and Bellator. And it wasn't going to be right away. There's going to be one in between, and my phone goes off. And I look down, and it, Kayla Harrison has signed to fight at Holly Holm in the UFC at number 300. I'm going, oh, my gosh. They think she's under contract. What's what's going on here? So I don't say anything. I'm the new guy. Well, their phones start going off. They all start looking down, and this is where they find out that she's not under contract. She's going to Vegas. And I tell you that story for one reason. That was nine weeks ago, which means she, Kayla Harrison, did not know. She knew for nine weeks she had to bring her body weight down to 135, which she had not weighed since she was in middle school. Damn. When she won the Olympic gold medal the second time for perspective, which I have to think is the prime of your athletic life. You're in your, your, your late teens and you're the Olympic champion. Guys, that was at 172 pounds. Wow. She was fighting the PFL at My 155. God. Yeah, she touched 45 doing. one time and then thought she was going to have to go back to 45 she to eventually find the cyborg fight. She peeled it off to 35. I don't know how she did it. I don't know how in what nine weeks she changed her physiology, but she did and she deserves credit for it. Yeah, she looked good, and it went to the second round. You didn't see any sort of issues with that. I think she's just, it's perfect timing. There's really no face of women's MMA right now. Amanda Nunes is out. Obviously, Holly Holmes on the back nine of life. Uh, clearly, Ronda's out. Uh, Shevchenko, you a little older. You got, um, you know, there's just, Joanna's out. So there's no big name in female fighting right now. So I feel like she's... Just it's perfect timing for her coming to the UFC. They got to give her a title shot right away. I like that Amanda Nunez. It, you know that might wake her up, get her out of bed, on retire. You do Amanda Nunez, Kayla Harrison. We got you know we're going Sizzler. That's yeah. a good fight. Sure. sure. Um, hey, look, yeah. look, Amanda could give that fight whenever she wants. I think Dana even said that. But imagine she waits. I think that Kayla would be champion. You come in, you fight her. You be, you become champion. Imagine she doesn't want to wait. Imagine she comes in and says, No, no, this is personal. There is no belt. I'm going to stop you from getting the belt. I'm coming back. I'm taking you out first, and I'm going to take my belt back. Just imagine from that perspective, because Amanda, don't forget, she feels she was ran out of the ATT. Well, she was she was ran out of the ATT. She left. But it also looked like she left the sport because Kayla was coming. That's what a lot of people said. That was one of the impressions that I had, whether it's accurate or not. So imagine she came back to reclaim that, but in a contender's standpoint, before she even let her get to the championship. I'm just saying, as far as personal grudges go, that story works. It that would does. Do it. Chael, I just want to fuck with the fans here because I did see you mouth when you were inducted into the Hall of Fame. You said something yes. like, one more time. I'm mm, just saying. You're close. Okay. One more for the bad guy. Okay. Oh, thank, thank you. God. Thank I, God. I thought maybe you were asking for another fight. I thought I'm, it was a Mike Tyson and be, situation. I'd be front and center, rubber banding my underwear into the octagon. I'm oh. just saying. If you mm. choose to do that, uh, maybe maybe a Chael Son and Brendan Schaub. Who knows? We'll see. Dude. You know, you'd have to suck I will down. tell you, <laughs> I have those fantasies, and I get them more every Olympic year. I get them more, and I think, <laughs> and it's like I'm going to put a singlet on and go wrestle a man. I'm going to try to get him down to the mat. Like I, I feel what a fool I am. But it's Olympic year. They're going to Paris. The trials for wrestling is this week, man. I can't wait. I'm excited for it. Uh, no, my yeah. time in MMA is. Long gone. <laughs> what, what, what about when you see, you know, like the the Jake Pauls, the Logan, like that stuff, or even the Jorge stuff with Game Bread? Does any of that interest you? Like, do you ever look at it and go, ah, man, I'm down for that. Quick payday, Your maybe. body language with your hands getting all sweaty. Yeah. It's, your hands are starting. Yeah. The blood is going to your hands, Chael. I would hate to be challenged. I don't know if my ego is such where I've overcome that to where I've... I, I, <laughs> I don't do that anymore. I don't think I'll ever be in that spot, but uh, it, it's an interesting question uh, when you ask it. And by the way, I, I told my mom, Mom, I quit that sport 10 years ago. She said, Honey, you retired five years ago. I said, Yeah, I retired five years ago. I quit 10 years ago. <laughs> like, but all fighters do that, right? We all are the last ones to know. Yeah, oh, I'm training smarter, not harder. Oh, I got this figured out. Oh, I did this different this time. Yeah. No, it just doesn't work that way. Now, Father Time. Well, Joe, we love you, brother. You are the best. I mean, we thought... You guys are awesome. I hope you know that I love you. You guys have built me up over the years. You were the first ones that I text. I wanted to come on. Thank you for the invite. But you know what? I've had it with you both. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> he hung up. Well-deserved, brother. He was great. Yes. Fucking love him.
Hall God of damn Famer, it. man. Ah, oh, Hall of Famer right there. Let's take a little break, B, because I want to talk to you about Progressive Insurance, because this episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Oh, insurance you mean, can be overwhelming, yeah, you, dude. You mean, you mean the, the Progressive, that 28 million drivers trust? Yeah, but people are like, ah, insurance seems like a lot. Where do I find the rate, the best rate? <laughs> they, how, about, how about our boys at Progressive? They have the Name Your Price tool, put you in charge of your auto insurance by working just the way it sounds. Mm -hmm. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, boom, they show you a variety of coverages that fit within your budget, giving you options yep yep yep, yep yep get a quote today at progressive.com try the name your price tool for yourself like brian said join over 28 million drivers who trust progressive progressive casualty insurance company affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law progressive i, I noticed you've been eyeing up oh dude i i couldn't I hear what chael was saying i was no. just looking at your freaking hoodie well it's because it's true classic i it's knew because it. even after i've washed it twice it looks brand new it's because it fits perfectly it's the reason i feel more athletic than a lot of NBA, you look like NFL a, a players. gray angel i look like a gray angel gray i'm angel. all shoulders i'm no waist mm. it's because it tends to hide the parts i don't want you to see now they're and known for their shirts parts. and their shirts are fantastic well, it's what we on. use for merch that's that's they make the best the best shirts they are known for their shirts but they also make the best joggers crew neck hoodies button-ups jeans whatever you're looking for get a variety pack of those tasty shirts they got it all for you. Yeah. And the, the spring ultra, is here. You want to look soft, super stretchy joggers. Mm. Dude, spring is here. They got their new vibrant new collection. They got the crew necks, the V-necks, the polo styles. They got it all. So you're looking popping for Ten the spring. Ten fresh colors. Oh, okay. nothing better, man. Yep. Nothing freaking better. So if you're ready to upgrade your closet this spring, shop now with the exclusive link. Go to trueclassic.com slash fighter. Oh, yeah. You save up to 25% off your first order on the best gear on the planet. Yep. I mean, I'm 57, but from the waist, from the neck down, when I'm wearing True Classic, oh, 55. Hey, thank you. Thank you. No matter how you move, make 2024 your most comfortable year yet with True Classic. Oh, it was good Chael stuff. Sonnen, Chael Sonnen. The Hall of Chael. Famer. Love him. Acting a little different. I knew, you know, I didn't know if he'd have time <laughs> He's for us. Now. He's different A little different. Some people don't change like that guy. It's great. We'll see. It's still um, early. He hasn't got his gold early. jacket yet, so we'll see if he comes on again. You're right. We'll see. You're right, buddy. Where you're you right. you you're, you got a little tight when I brought up the PED stuff. I got a little tight. A little uncomfortable yeah. for but you. I know back then that 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 was part of the sport. So no, you found out. Yeah, I found out. Otherwise, but, you wouldn't have got tight. But I was. Yeah. Yeah. But I was. And he explained it too. Like that's what I. That's, but that I mean, was, I've known but that. that. But that was my intention of bringing it up. Like yeah. people go, oh, they let PED user into the Hall of Fame. You got to understand that he had a therapeutic testosterone exemption. We all were trying to get it back then. A lot, of, a lot of guys had it when they, he was fighting. Things. When I was fighting, yep. he also disclosed it to the commission in California, and then they did this to him. Yeah. So th there's a caveat there Very much where so. the knock's going to be, oh, they let a PD user in the Hall of Fame. But there's an asterisk even with that. Yes. So that's why you bring it up. Yes. You can't have him on and just pretend it didn't happen. Right. Then what? What are we doing? Right. Yeah. And yeah, he got in the Hall of Fame for that fight with Silva, and Silva also got popped as well. So, Correct. Yeah. Oh, I can go through. Yeah. If you, you could bring up all the Hall of Fame fights and yeah. guys that got in, and we can go through who's on steroids and who's not, and it's going to hurt your feelings. <laughs> it's going to hurt your feelings. And <laughs> so that's not the also, hill to die on. You can also look at the difference between when Nowinski and his team got in there versus before, and you can actually see a marked difference in how bodies changed, literally. Certain People guys, fight, for sure. Yeah, certain, certain guys, guys' bodies literally deflated. And but love Chael, perfect guy to come on for UFC 300. Yeah. Probably won't have him on in May. There's the UFC is going ice cold in May. The, the fights coming up in May are horrible, Brian. So prepare yourself. And then June 1st, it yeah. gets, June is litty. It gets litty. J June is litty. It gets litty. Like a titty. Lit. Yeah. But May, it's going to hurt your feelings. But yeah. June 1st, we just got to make it to June 1st. Okay. Starting June go. 1st, okay. it's a great, okay. summer's going to be lit. Summer's gonna be but bad. May, no Whitaker Tremayev. May's gonna make you sad. May, gonna May's make, gonna hurt your feelings. It's gonna hurt my feelings. Yeah. A bit. Okay. A lot, of, a lot of apex. Okay. Uh, what right. do you got, Chin? Let's move on. Right. First current event. Uh, so OJ Simpson passed away this past week. Uh, prostate cancer, and his executor of his will, his attorney, has come out and said that he's going to make it his main priority to make sure that, especially the Goldmans do not get any more of the $33.5 million they are owed in the civil lawsuit. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Here's my thing. You know, I'm balls deep in the OJ stuff. I've followed it all. I've been to the murder sites. I'm a weirdo. 
Uh, let just play devil's advocate here with me. Now, I'm not saying this. I'm just play devil's advocate. He passed away, right? And you see people online going good riddance and all this and about time, blah, blah, blah. Riddle me this. What if he was actually innocent? What like just play that I game don't for have me? To really just do it. entertain me. What I can me also it. say is, if you believe in the justice system, okay, and I know it's flawed, and it is flawed, majorly flawed. That's fine, but the justice system is also the justice system, and it's a lot better than most justice systems. We do our best. Yes, there are problems. Yes, people forget actually Donald Trump was spearheading criminal justice reform, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, if you look at it, he was found innocent in a court of law. Oh, there's so much caveat Respect with that. Respect the courts. Mm, that respect. one's tough especially everything going on with Hold the on. rodney king and no, all that respect the courts and y you respect the courts now oh man now having said that i, I prefer your that, argument he was then found guilty in a civil court and that's one of the reasons we have civil courts because he was found guilty there so he had to pay out that money yeah okay so he was convicted he was freed then convicted of kidnapping etc did nine years mm -hmm. long time long stretch nine fucking years horrible, horrible. i mean yeah and, and if you look at the videotape of all that, it was all, you know, he was just there. And I think he held him at gunpoint in the. Yeah, yeah. him yeah. and his buddy held him. And it was okay. for. Bad idea. Uh, he it was, was for like his memorabilia. memorabilia. Yeah, in sure. Vegas. But at, that is kidnapping. Uh, in Vegas, Station. That's ki that is kidnapping. Yep, that is, that is a capital crime in some cases, but that was kidnapping. But the reason, but anybody else that does that crime gets like two, three years max. He got nine years because that judge was like. Now we actually the judge's hands. Are, I heard legal, legal experts talking about the judge's hands are kind of tied in that too. There was a there's you really get in real trouble when you do that to somebody, and it's very very common. But it, it's nine years, mm -hmm. pretty standard for a kidnapping. It is. It's actually is it? It's actually low. Is it's it? Actually, yes, it's actually low. You can do uh, easily twenty for that for kidnapping. So, yeah. Yeah. I got well, it. it's actually a capital crime in some cases. You, you can't can do, kidnap you can do people, death. especially by gun. Yeah. So so. Um, Kidnapping is a major offense. Very, but very but my whole reason for he went down the, the whole thing on that. So kidnapping is punishable with three, five to eight years. He got nine. The victim was under 14. Kidnapping is punishable by five, eight, or 11. So yeah, these were grown yeah. men. So yeah. nine would be pretty harsh. You're yeah. crazy if you don't think there's some influence there. The statutory maximum sentence is, for, is life imprisonment. Five numbers. All right. Um, I don't know. Um, anyway, so so I remember they, them saying the judge's hands were kind of tied. The average case. is five years. Um, he got nine. Yeah, is but there were other Nevada? crimes. It wasn't just kidnapping. He was also guilty of other crimes. Also kidnapping with a gun. There was all kinds of stuff. Like there was all the, he got caught with a bunch of, you know, things like that. So, but my whole point is like, take all that away. Yeah. My whole point is just like, imagine being him. And I'm not saying he is. I'm just, just play this game with me for entertainment purposes on a podcast. Let's say he was innocent. Let's say some of the conspiracies his older son did, he's covering up for him. Let's say he was innocent. Think about the way he's been treated since then. Yeah. I disagree. I don't think he's been treated that bad. I mean, you see him out on dates all the time. He's having fun. Oh, no, girls Nevada love it. But was, it's he, was he on dates? Oh, all the time. Oh, like, blah, blah. I know people that know him very well. And girls like him. Oh, my God. He's dangerous. Oh, that's the bad boy. That's the ultimate bad yeah, boy. And Bitch, famous. he will kill you. He, yeah. And they like that. Well, he was he's charming as shit. He's good looking. Women liked like He's OJ. He's OJ. And and he is dangerous. There's something about that that turns a lot of women on. Yeah. So so yeah, yeah, but I, he murdered two people. Well, allegedly, sir. Oh boy. Sure. I'm just saying, respect the courts. We have to. Otherwise, if we're, we're not respecting court. the courts, uh, I don't know if you can. Respect the civil court. You got to so, pay. So so you got to pay and there are ways again within legally within that legal framework to 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 get around that too which were taken and will be taken. So to me this is the justice system working the way the justice system works a little chaotic, a little unfair, a little fair uh, all over the place and it's business as usual. Nothing should surprise us. It's America. Uh, overall, you know I, me. I'm America first. It, th this one's a little tough because you got to look at the situation and what was you, going you followed on. Followed very closely. Very In your close. heart, there's zero, zero doubt. Right? Zero. zero. Yeah, I mean, zero to anybody. And like, even if you if you actually read like and follow along like, as that trial was going on, it's like it's so obvious he did it. Yeah. Like the 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 any other case, this is a slam dunk. There's no controversy. Right. But because yeah, dream team. 
he had the dream team, but also the the biggest kind of liability was Mark Furman, who was this cop. Yeah, where to be a racist because he used the N word. They thought well, well, they made him like, seem like a complete racist, a yeah. and so they made they made they took the 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 focus off OJ the murder, which the evidence was so clear, sure. and they made the 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 whole like focus. He might have planted evidence. The whole focus was on LAPD. Yeah. And all they were looking for out of all the LAPD was one chink in the armor. And they found it with Mark. Yeah. And so they went on that. So they put the doubt in the jury's mind going, he, we know there was, his blood was not only at the scene, but in his car. And then he fled to Chicago. We know that we've been here previously to the house in Brentwood several times. We know that she wrote in her diary oj was going to kill her and he's come close before we know all this but they went i know if we could just plant some sort of doubt that the glove the footprints everything matches oj if we could just plant some doubt that the lapd planted that stuff we're gonna be okay because we're okay because rodding king's going on and they let those cops off and they don't want to go through that again so he was sure. when he decided to kill That's her right. it was perfect timing mm. for society and everything because i think la went uh, well first of all do you know this that the trial was not in los angeles it was actually in simi valley they they didn't think you get a fair try in la so they went to oh, i'm sorry that was for the the rodney king one so instead of doing oh, la yeah. they didn't think it'd be a fair trial so they took it to simi valley so, for so, rodney king well, to get him off so that corruption. let me in ask the you court. this question so he got off when he got off, um, what was his life like, though? He was an horrible. international pariah. No, horrible. So he talks about it, like he, in his book, which I read, he talks about how like he would try and go to his same restaurants, and that's why he had to move. He'd go to the same restaurants, people that were friends for years, and they wouldn't let him in the restaurant. And he's like, wow. but I was found innocent. They're like, we don't care, man. We think you did it. Wow. Because they, they were aware he of the way. He couldn't get to a restaurant. But they, they, because these friends that he had from 30, 40 years, they were aware of his treatment of Nicole way prior to this. Oh, so they go, oh, he did it. As soon as he saw it, he did it. Because wow. so many times, he beat her up so bad. Jesus and people Christ. would cover for him. Jesus. The LAPD would cover for him. Wow. Yeah. I had to write a thesis paper on this in, in like a communicational law course. And people seem to forget like, the defense only has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. That's right. It's just 1% of doubt. Sowing the seeds of doubt. That's right. But the way they handled the case is just like Brendan saying, you know, just continuously poking at other things and taking away from the fact that the evidence was there. And they one stopped thing, talking to each other, those guys. Right. And one old. thing people don't know is they had him stop taking his arthritis medication. So while his hands in jail. got bigger. So his hand got bigger. So they want him to put on the glove. They were they banking. They pressured so, them to put So it the on. prosecution, Fuck. And, but they, they, they didn't know that that prosecutor was going to do that. Because they were like, we don't know. Because if this doesn't fit, we're screwed. And then, so the plan wasn't to do the glove. For whatever reason, that dude was like, why don't you put on the glove? That's why you seem like, yeah, yeah, put on the glove. He stopped taking his medicine. Damn. It made his hand swollen. So he's like, look, they don't even fit. So they were dying for this to happen. Oh, dying. Man. Do you know before the trial started that uh, Card Rob Kardashian and his lawyers had him take a lie detector test? Yeah. And he failed it miserably. And they went, okay, well, this isn't good. And well, he, he was he, a sociopath. And you know, right? Rob, yeah, it doesn't matter. But you know, Rob Kardashian as well s said that he that OJ did it. Yeah. That was his best friend. The trial was sure. over. They stopped being he friends. Stopped talking. He wanted nothing to do with him. He was, and because yeah. he goes, because I was so close to it, and he was in, in the room when they did the lie detector test and other evidence that we weren't aware of. Rob goes, he 100% did it. I couldn't be his friend anymore. Fuck. That's his closest friend. Damn. So, but the, you, how, how does life change? So he had to leave LA because. He, he had a party, like a celebratory party, mm -hmm. you know, when he's found not guilty, and none of his friends came. No one showed up. No. Nobody. No. Nobody. It's over. So, yeah, and then he tried to go to the same restaurants. He and can't then do that. He went down to Florida. He went to Florida for a little bit, yeah. Was he with his kids? What was his relationship with his kids? I thought that, that um, Nicole's parents Chloe got Kardashian? half custody. <laughs> Who? Chloe Kardashian. That's a fun conspiracy. That's a rumor. I, you know, it's a conspiracy. Bring I don't, that I don't, up. We've brought it up many we, times. No, it's, it's a waste of <laughs> yeah. time. I, don't, I like them. I, okay. It's just, it's a fun one. Yeah. But by the way, the gloves look like they fit, just not great. No, they don't. He can't bend his hand. Like, oh. you couldn't commit murder in that glove. Even though they found a receipt for these isotoner gloves mm. in his house. What? Yeah. yeah. Fuck, dude. Oh, no, they, they found, hold on. They so, and blood, blood, the DNA evidence. evidence. They, hold on. They found blood and nicole's blood in his car yeah i mean that they said was planted 
Yeah. Okay. At the crime scene of Nicole, they found all three blood and you in know, his car you know he, and at his house. And you know, he flew to Chicago the night of the murder. Right after he flies to Chicago, the police call him like, hey, your wife is murdered and all this. He doesn't go, oh my God, starts crying. He's like, oh no, does that mean I have to come back? <laughs> yeah, he's a bad guy. Cato Kalen also, if you guys remember, Cato was living in OJ's back house. Classic. He had a statement recently where he, the people have been asking him to say something and he literally just repeats the facts of like his death and then starts talking about the Goldmans and the Brown family. Like even uh, he's like, the guy I didn't knew, look right. I knew Cato a little bit. He's a good guy. And Cato, yeah. Look at that. I don't know. Sweetheart. Um, That's Cato now? Yeah. Um, he was handsome back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the ladies la, 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 loved him. It's like Christian Slater. Yeah, yeah, they loved him. He was a good guy. He was a guest on Mad TV. I don't know why. Him. Yeah. Mm. He became a superstar. Everybody you did. Look at his. So he on his. Uh, they on stopped his, the NBA finals. Show, show, his show hands. His, OJ. His, the veins away. in his hands say T and V. It's Kato cool. Kalins? Yep. Look at his hands. Um, he, uh, but I'm just saying, like, he, he, clearly he did it. But if he didn't, when it, it's just a sad. Yeah, story. he definitely did it. But but his life, um, his life was shit after that, wasn't it? Then he went to jail. He seemed always to be in a good mood. He seemed to always be hey. Well, on camera, you know? yeah. who knows? But his life was horrible. He did like like a rap video. If you remember that in Florida, it was awful. He did like a rap video. Um, yeah, I'm sure he had a tough for a couple of years. But um, probably had a pretty good life. Cause he played he, cause golf. He had a pension. They, yeah, they couldn't touch pension. his NFL. His yeah. NFL pension, three hundred thousand dollars pension or something like that. Good enough, especially as long as he played. You yeah. know, he was making money in prison too because his attorneys would bring him flattened like footballs for him to sign, and they would continuously make money off of that. And then he also put his yeah. property somewhere so they couldn't get him, get, and they put him under his child's LLC, name. But yeah, yeah it's, it's weird how they did it. They figured it out. So then he's got. Uh, I wonder how much he actually paid to the. Uh, Goldman's. It doesn't say, it did say that he did his best to not pay them this entire time, though. And I know they couldn't touch his NFL pension. That wasn't, yeah. that's untouchable, apparently. What a tragedy. Mm -hmm. Horrible, right? Yeah. yeah. Horrible. 132 grand? Oh. Wow. That's it. Out of 32.5 million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I told you, I've told the story before, but yeah, Ron Goldman sold yeah. me uh, Horrible. my sweater. Oh. And yeah, and Nordstrom's in Arizona. And he's How such funny. a sweet man. And I, it dawned on me who he was. And I just kind of wanted to give him a hug because you could see he was selling sweaters and go, uh, no, he was a nice oh, man. Oh, it's the worst thing that can happen to a human being. Uh, you lose your child. Dude, it, There's nothing. You, when you have Kill a son, me. when Kill you me. have a son, and I, you have a son, like even the thought of something, God forbid, happened to your children is my children. Yeah. Like it's, it's beyond what you can handle. It's beyond what you can handle. Awful. Man. I mean, even like dictators, when they lose their kids, yeah. like they crumble. Like Everybody. Saddam Hussein, even when he was in prison, they were saying like, he, like they were like this horrible, evil man, but his daughter was coming to see him and he'd melt. They're like, oh. that's the only time we saw him yeah. where he was like being sweet and like baby talking. Yeah. Like, I don't care who you are, where, you know, well, like that's, dictator, that's, I listened to the phone leader call of a military, I don't care who you are, your children, dude. Yeah. The dictator of Serbia, Milosevic. Mm. Um, I listened to him talk to his son. And there's a, the, and you hear him on the phone and he's talking to his son, you know, and he loves his son. He loves Even his the son. BTK killer. No, really? Oh, yeah. They haven't talked to his son. And he's, he's like, he's a dad. What? That's where he breaks the wall, the, the wall. He really? Breaks, yeah. They have, they have what video? Uh, yeah, he, he had a straight up family. Now they changed their name because they don't want to be associated with yeah. him, but, uh, you know. He's a monster. It's wild, right? It is. Here's a wild one, though. The, the OJ stuff to me is, you know. Yeah. It's it's crazy. It's crazy on his deathbed. He wasn't like, I did it. Yeah, I did it, and then died. Like, Should've. could you just Should've. give us a bone to give people like uh, closure? Closure, I know. Give the family closure. Just admit it. But it said Come he was clean. surrounded by his kids and grandkids. You think he wants to look at the mother? No. But apparently, know? he said some a long thing. But he, you know, to, in order to get into the the hospital in, in to see him. Everybody, kids, doesn't matter. Everyone had to sign an NDA. What? Because what he was saying. Who knows so let, what he let me said. ask you this question: Is it is right. it uh, is there ever it, is it in anybody's mind is it possible that this man had a moment of madness? Obviously, he should do the crime. I mean, do the time for the crime. But did, is is this a guy who had a moment of insane, jealous rage, passion, madness, and then the rest of the time he's always been better than that? 
I don't think you can be. I don't if if murder if you're able to murder somebody like that, especially somebody that you love, especially the the mother of your children, because you know when you take her out, you have literally affected your kids in the worst way possible for the rest of their life. If you're able to accept those terms, you, you, there's no way you're normal throughout the rest of your life. Right. There's no way you're a good friend. You now remember in high school, his best friend had a serious girlfriend. OJ fucked her and took her from him. Which is like cool, mine now. Yeah. And that's his best friend. He's a shithead. They said his anger came from like a lot of his he and he's always had anger issues. He always hit women. His his issues came from his dad being gay. His dad was gay. They think that's why he ran so hard. That's why he was like, I gotta be the best. Fuck. It was all just he, you know, he hated that his Who dad. Who the was fuck gay. knows? Isn't that weird? Who the fuck knows? I would be a bad judge and a bad cop. I just I just feel bad for everybody a lot of times. And I'm a shitty, I, I just. I don't feel bad for OJ. No. Yeah. You can't kill people. I feel bad for everybody. <laughs> I don't. Not, not, not when it comes to that. Yeah. Not when you're killing moms. No, I agree with you. I mean, you know. You, I mean, you got to go to prison for the rest of your life. Gotta go to you got to go to prison. You have to. There's no, there's, there's, there's no there's, compromise. There's a reason there's prison. Let's go to the next one. Mm -hmm. Next one. So this North Carolina man got arrested after going into a women's locker room at Planet Fitness in front of a 17-year-old because he identified as a woman. Interesting. That's how this yeah. goes. And then asked the girl to rub lotion on him and shower with him. That's how this goes. This is why it's unsafe. I, listen, I, you know, if, if you are born that way and feel like you're wired different and all that stuff and you, you, know, and you okay. identify as that, yeah, right. the, the issue is, is most of these psychos don't. And now you got to remember the rest of the world doesn't abide by these rules yeah. and you're going to get a lot of no, this. No, but you'll get teen girls accused of hate speech when you protest that a man with a dick is in your fucking dressing room. Go fuck yourself with your and my, my thing is, I have is, no time for And this. my thing is, if you want to create a third bathroom where it's like, you know, open gender bathroom, that's fine. Do that. And like, well, we don't feel, uh, we get that, but listen, we're protecting hey, kids. Hey, get that motherfucker out of the girl's bathroom. That's a dude. I don't yes. care if you identify as a fucking female. You're a dude. Well, no, he, no, you, if you do that no, with my daughter's no, in there, be, relax. I'm, I'm, I'm coming chill. after you. He's clearly figured out. Clearly, he doesn't think he's a girl. He's He's cheating the system. Yeah, he's he's using that guy. as an excuse. He's a, he's a, yeah, yes. he's a predator. So clearly, he's not even, you know, he has, yeah, but he's a cut, white dude with dreadlocks. Cut his head off. Agree. That would be good. We could cut his fucking head off. Now, can we rewind the tape where OJ literally murdered two people and you're saying, could he be a good guy? <laughs> no, give him to OJ and have OJ <laughs> okay, cut his head off. Okay, because very confusing. <laughs> it's, I, I this know. guy killed nobody, but then OJ I, I kills cut that two people. Off. You're right. And you're like, is there any way he's no, actually learned right. from his ways? You're right. And he's okay? You're right. This shit, though, drives blow, me nuts. You're like this. I think about you my daughter in a fucking thing and I'll fucking kill that guy. Yeah. Right now. Now think of your daughter dating OJ Simpson and she's getting beat relentlessly for years. I will kill him too. Okay, keep that I same call, energy. I call I call Brennan Schaub. I go, need you to just be on just watch. Yes. I'm gonna fight him. Now he's a Once really good athlete. Once it starts going down south. Once it starts going south. Might not go south. I'm fighting for my daughter and he's a football player. So go fuck yourself. As great an athlete as you are. Oof, Look, tough right one. here. And he has that that gay what? hate anger from his dad. Yeah, and I have no tough. anger issues. Okay. OJ Simpson, the Heisman Trophy winner? Right, that's right. In his prime. Oh, you think you'd win? <laughs> that's why I love you. Bye-bye. This is why I win so much money off you. But I'm going. I'm going. You're going. I'm going hard, and it's a different thing, but I got my boy Brendan. When it, if it goes south. Yeah, I'll be there. When it goes south. I'll be you there. gotta be there. Now it's gonna go south right. about 30 seconds. <laughs> well, you say that, but it's my daughter, and he doesn't fight. And he doesn't know how to fight, so there's a different thing. All right? Let's take a little break because I want to know about if there's a pre-workout for sex. Oh, I want to know I'm trying to if wake there's my a pill up. I can take to wake my wiener up. And I'm not talking about gas station pills. I'm not talking about drugs that have nasty side Ugh. effects. I'm talking about science-backed stuff. That's actually that will, healthy for you? Yeah, that, that will actually promote tissue uh, enlargement that promotes uh, uh, blood vessel en uh, engorgement. Dude, Joy Mode is there to save the day. Whether you're happy or unhappy with your performance in the sack, why not perform even better? Joy Mode sexual performance boosters like pre-workout, but for sex, exactly what we're looking for. And, it's and natural I, science back yeah, wellness. It contains clinically supported doses of arginine, nitrate, L-citrulline, Panax, ginseng, and vitamin C. All of this created by best-in-class scientists and biochemistry PhDs. Why? Because it tends to... Uh, it's a sexual performance booster because it r raises blood levels of arginine nitrate, which increases and directly promotes nitrous oxide production, which is all about how you get your wiener 
to be at 10 hut. Yeah, and it's just not about your wiener, but this is healthy for overall health. You can go to the gym and use it. It's it's just the healthier way to go. Yep, yep, All yep. you do is tear open the little sachet, mix it with six to eight ounces of water, and boom, you're ready to go 45 to four hours prior to sexual activity or before your workout. You want to spice things up in the bedroom and do it naturally without nasty prescription drugs? Well, guess what? We have quite the offer for you guys. Go to usejoymode.com slash fighter or enter the code fighter at checkout for 20% off your first order. That's usejoymode.com slash fighter for 20% off your first order. Thanks, Joy Mode. Yes. All I'm saying is not not a Brian Callen 59 years old. Yeah. I'm talking seven, dude. All right. I'm talking about Talk. I'm talking about your run the mill 57 year old dad. Probably wears a you know suit and tie every day to work. Yeah. He had his blue belt. He's gotten it over the last 10 years yeah. against a in their prime NFL player. On a 53-man roster, your hands are gonna be, you're gonna, you're gonna be your hands tough. Gonna be full. It's going to be tough. Your hands going to be now, full. No one believes in jiu-jitsu more than me. But the run of the mill dad. believes in me more than you, right? Yeah, dude. You can do it. What else you got, dude? Uh, That's one, God. dude. It's been a long one. It's been good, though. It's my favorite kinds yeah, of conversations. Yeah, yeah. Last cool. one. Let's keep it light. Uh, this is a viral video going on. I just thought of you and Boston and Tiger when I saw this. Okay, try again. What's wrong? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, I think he, I think he goes a little hard, right? It's weird oh. to hit that hard when the kid's pitching <laughs> three feet away. Oh, he hit him right in the head with a wiffle ball. Oh, baby! Oh. Okay, that's how old my little baby is. Yeah, I don't. That just sounds so terrible, too. Yeah. yeah. Not a good look. Well, that's hey, why. Hey, Dad. That's why. You hey, use Dad. It. Like, who are you doing this for? <laughs> who the fuck goes full <laughs> throttle with a toddler? Three inches. Someone goes, that dad sucked. <laughs> yeah, why did he? And he has a Barry Bonds jersey on. <laughs> <laughs> why did he go balls to the wall? I don't know. That's fucking tough. Know. That's a tough He's one. Just, trying, just trying to impress the yeah. his kid. I, I get it. Yeah. Don't bring that soft <laughs> surf shit. I mean, what are you doing, dude? Uh, Bunt the ball towards the little dude. Uh, uh, Welcome to the fucking show, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm with that lady. Why would you even hit it that hard playing with a toddler? Yeah. yeah. That's hey, not cool. He swung through. It's the way I punch. What did that kid expect? Throwing that light shit to Barry Bonds? <laughs> 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 the comments are gold. Dad's like, this never made it past JV in sports. Yeah, <laughs> probably. There's some ego. He loves his baby. He didn't mean it. Definitely don't do that, though, as yeah. a dad. No. Is that it, Chin? That's it. All right. Cal, where are you going to be at, buddy? Kids, Bray Improv this weekend, Friday, Saturday. Let's go April 19th and 20th. Uh, I'll be there at Bricktown Comedy Club, Oklahoma City, uh, April 26 and 27. There's a rumor Delia might come down. Oh, that'd uh, be fun. Yep, we'll see. Either way, I'll see you soon. Looking forward to it. Love you guys. All right, kids. The Cowboys fight campaign for USC 300 with Delia, our boy Mayhem Miller, Brian, myself, available right now on Thick Boy. Go watch it. It's a fun one. Love you guys. We're out.